mind and mad. We're about to call Miss Lago Marcella. That is a world famous super producer Timberland's recording engineer. Hello. Miss Marcella Aresia. What's going on, baby? <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. You are in the mind of mad right now, and you know reach out to one of my favorite ladies in the industry that would be you you are absolutely beautiful <laughs> you're gorgeous and you command a pretty 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 powerful position in a, in a very interesting place like I want to talk to the people about how you know you started working with Timberland and how you became one of his you know right hand women so to speak because <laughs> I know I know you for wow. years and I know you on that grind from when you first started working at the hit factory to where you are now and like anytime I hear your name I just smile I'm so proud of you man oh thank you thank you thank you um well you know like the whole thing with me and Tim it really all began when I was working at Hit and Turn and uh, general assisting and stuff like that Missy Elliott um and I started to assist sessions with you know Missy Elliott yeah and that's basically how I met Tim is working on the Under Construction album with Missy when Tim came down to Miami to work with her. Um, you know, that was my first taste of meeting him, you know? Okay. He took me underneath his wing. Gotcha. And, you know, and from there, Tim was just like, okay, yeah, whatever, you're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, her shit. So, yeah. so he saw me after a while, like, he was like, oh, okay, this girl's really about her shit. So. Yeah, and it took a while, you're saying, for him to kind of like, warm up to you to even take you oh, serious. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tim ain't easy. Tim isn't an easy one to please. Like, you, you know, um, he's worked with the best. He's, you know, he's been around. So. He's considered one of the best. Shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> most, most most of the best want to work with him. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, thank you. I've always wanted to do a story with you. Um because of the fact that it's just so interesting, like like you're a recording engineer, you do a lot of technical things with sound and get all the records sounding crazy to where when we drop the CD in the car, our necks kind of snap and our, our, our fingers snap and our hands clap and, and you, you take the sounds and you make them sound crazy, right? But like that position is not generally filled by a woman. And especially one that's as attractive as you are. And you know I'm gonna throw up some. So how hard is that? Like, what are some of the challenges you felt like you've had as a sexy Latina in the studio with a bunch of cocky rich men? <laughs> you know what it is? I'm very... I mean, you know, of course, you know, there's, there's a little bit of extra attention that's involved. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, I kind of... It's not that I put on horse blinders. But I'm, I'm, I have this mission, I'm set out, and I'm so focused that when I go into the studio, that's just what I, you know, I'm there to do what, is, you know, what it is I'm envisioning for a record. Yeah. You know, whether it's, I'm recording it or I'm mixing it, or, you know, I'm, I'm doing some extra, you know, cutting up or, you know, additional production stuff on it, you know, that's what it is. You know, all the other stuff, you know, you know, obviously I'm flattered, you know, how people, you know, take to me and, you know, it's, it, you know, it's nice, but... I'm not focused on that. Like, okay, thank you. You know, I say thank you and you know move on. So you, so you, you found. I don't like have to you get caught up? You found that you found the way to kind of like tune out the BS. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's not. And it's not easy. I mean, it's not hard. It's just you know, I, when I'm focused, I'm so focused. It's like I'm just I'm there to do something and that's it. And anything that kind of goes on beyond me, like around me, I'm just like, okay, you know. Yeah, I can definitely attest, like, you know, because besides me admiring you and your skills and your talent, I consider you a friend. And even at one point on our, our road to the friendship that we've established through the years, you've worked with me. And, I, and I've seen it because I'm a pain in the ass. And, and I might not be super rich, but I'm cocky and I'm attracted to you. I think you're a bad one. <laughs> And I, I remember like shit just four years ago when you were working with me in my home studio and helping me get certain things sounding right and, and helping me with some tracks. And then all of a sudden you just blew up. Just the, the even the types of conversation that we'd have from like one week to the next. It was just like, damn, it was like, yeah, I got my little Honda Accord and I'm chilling to, yo, I'm about to buy another property. And da, 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 da. I was like, oh shit. 
Marcel is doing it. You go, girl. Yeah, I think it wasn't an overnight thing, but it was definitely a lot of hard work. I mean, you knew, you knew, you knew me from the beginning. Like, so Big time. You saw how much it was. Like, I'd be putting in, like, you know. Not even sleeping. Eight, hour days, but still jump over to your house for, like, two, three hours and run back to the hit factory. And it was just like, I was, it was like that for, three, you know, three years straight, seven days a week. Yeah. I didn't see Christmases. I didn't see... You know, I miss my parents' birthdays and, you know, my family, you know, special occasions. I miss a lot. But let me ask you this. That's very funny you bring that up about dedication and hard work and the things that you missed. Because now what you can do for your family is tenfold of what you could do then. So, I mean, I know you're very family oriented. You've always been. You've made up for that tenfold, haven't you? You know... I mean, I don't know if I've made up for it. I mean, you can't, you can't make up for lost time. Okay. And, you know, definitely seeing my parents, how proud they are of me, and, you know, just even, like, my brothers and stuff. Yeah. It, it's definitely a feeling of, of, you know, it feels good. It really feels good. And at least I know that they see that it wasn't all for nothing. Word. So it was definitely, you know, so they're really proud of me. Every time, you know, they see, you know, either it's my credits or somebody in their job saying, oh, my gosh, your daughter just that, or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything. They, they just feel, they feel really, you know, special, so, you know, I love that, I love that, I love making them feel like that. I could totally relate, like, imagine, imagine, like, both of my parents kind of came up very business, both stockbrokers, killing it on Wall Street, Merrill Lynch, Bear Stearns back in the day, and it's like, their son does parties, you know, it really, honestly, took up until about, I'd say three, four years ago, where my parents really, really, really got it, like, they really got it, and you know what it took? It's funny you bring up like when people bump into them like random people saying oh my god your daughter or oh my god your son this because it took my pop having some major major clients that he does major I'm talking about major hundreds of millions of dollars worth of business with a year like coming to Miami and then going back to New York to the office on the desk and be like yo your son runs that shit da 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 and he hooked this up and, and we, we did this and da 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 and he got us all squared away and we were able to lock down the client because of your son it took that for my pop to be able to sit back and be like oh word oh oh shoot and then and then he started throwing me more he started throwing me clients and business so like I came into being a man like I've been a man I lived on my own for years but then it took like his peers bigging me up for him to kind of realize it so I totally get it like when you say like your parents are proud especially when they hear like third parties or people maybe outside the family taking notice to what you're exactly. doing in your name on certain things that's a dope feeling it's very it's incredible you know yeah 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 all their coffee was like 12 30 at night and you know my parents go to bed early, so I was like, what the hell? You know, I thought it was an emergency. This man pulled up something on YouTube with me. You know, I was in the studio with Polo and Carrie Hilton. And... <laughs> like, I see you on YouTube, and this is incredible. And I'm like, and it's not even that big of a deal, but, you know, for him, yeah. especially in this day and age, you know, yeah. like, you know, my parents come from a generation where the internet wasn't like that, you know? Exactly. And, you know, so they're just... It's crazy. Nah, that's hot. So, like, you know what? You know I gotta get crazy with you, cause we could we could keep it professional all day. But come on, we gotta we gotta keep it a little racy if you're dealing with the M A double D. So, like, you mentioned a couple things about how you've had these super late nights and years of dedication and work, but like at the same time we're people, right? And you kind of like certain types of activities and things you kind of gotta get in where you fit in. So, like, I want to know, and I think the people know. Where's the craziest place you ever had sex? Man. Where's the craziest place you ever did it? Did it like this? <laughs> I plead the fifth. No, you can't! Everybody answers this, man! Where's the craziest place you ever You don't gotta say who it was with. Let's just say this, let's just say this, let's just say this. Alright. Let's just say I'm part of the Sky High Mile Club. I like that! I like that! But come on, that's the craziest place? Was it on a private jet? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm part of the Sky High Mile Club. Oh, the, the, sky, you're <laughs> the Mile High Club. <laughs> Yo, you're a trip, Bobby. It's crazy, because not, not many people can really say they've done it in that type, you know what I'm saying, that type of scenario.